since the modern resurgence of the flat earth subject in 2014, the main methods of engagement by the masses have unfortunately been denial, ridicule, and once in a while, a so-called debate. With most any other topic, debates take the shape of formal conversations where opposing positions are presented, argued, and rebutted in an effort to better understand an issue. However, with this hot-button topic, since it is widely perceived as just an incorrect archaic assumption of our ignorant ancient ancestors, those arguing against it tend to have such arrogance and contempt that the debates usually devolve into nothing but repeated interruptions, name-calling, sarcasm, and logical fallacies. While I applaud and appreciate everyone who brings attention to this important issue, I would argue that what we really need to help bring alternative cosmology center stage is more genuine discourse, dialogue, discussions, and demonstrations, not debates. There are Flat Earth representatives like Nathan Oakley and Austin Witsit who have engaged in, and ostensibly won, several debates, which I think is admirable. I have personally accepted two debates myself, and subsequently won by forfeit when leading NASA spokesman Neil deGrasse Tyson first agreed to meet me live on the largest podcast in the world, The Joe Rogan Experience, only to chicken out and cancel after the debate was scheduled and announced on air. Then, a few years later, I was invited by former Hollywood actor-turned-conspiracy theorist Owen Benjamin to debate live on YouTube, only for him to refuse to turn on my microphone for the entire show. The only reason I accepted these two particular offers is because of the large audience that would have been reached. Since then, many new YouTube personalities pushed by their bias algorithm have built entire channels around debating Flat Earthers. These snarky, talking heads with sciency pseudonyms, and even claiming themselves professors, have effectively hijacked the Flat Earth keyword online by corralling well-meaning Flat Earthers onto their platforms. During these so-called debates, which inevitably quickly devolve into nothing but incessant interruptions and insults, very little information is actually communicated to the audience. The opening statements are made, and shortly thereafter, the egoistic battle for intellectual supremacy commences. Both sides quickly become impatient and exasperated at the opponent's lack of listening, and any semblance of equanimity is replaced with cynicism and sarcasm. Rather than being a serious, formal discourse with the goal of better mutual understanding, it becomes more like an informal roast or comedy show with the goal of witty remarks and ridicule. In the end, neither debater ever concedes or changes their mind, and the audience chooses a winner based on who they initially agreed with, not on who argued the more solid position. So what is actually accomplished with debates of this nature? Well-meaning flat-earthers appearing on such programs to engage these professional globe apologists probably think they are doing effective activism, helping educate the listeners, and hoping to awaken a few open minds in the audience. In reality, however, due to constant interruptions, insults, diversions, and over-talking, the guest is rarely given the chance to formulate a full argument. Instead of educating the listeners as intended, they end up being mere entertainment and pseudo-intellectual fodder, bringing views, relevance, and legitimacy to the opposition by interacting with them. If the goal is activism and educating the masses, then the focus should be on creating informative presentations, empirical demonstrations, and scientific experiments, not endlessly arguing over moot points. Even with friends, family, neighbors, or co-workers, when Flat Earth is brought up, it seems the default is to debate. Most people think they already know the truth, so rather than patiently listen, discuss, consider, ponder, or pontificate, they just want to immediately debate to try and show their intellectual superiority. If someone who has never researched Flat Earth claims they want to debate that the Earth is actually a globe, they are admitting to being so closed-minded that they have no intention of listening or learning a new perspective, and simply want to argue against it. In such cases, there is no benefit to further engagement, and it is more effective to respect yourself and your time by letting them know you welcome genuine back-and-forth discussion, but aren't looking to debate a subject where you likely know more about their position than they do. In my personal experience, and in the majority of debates available online, this is usually what happens. 
the flat earther knows more about the globe and their heliocentric pseudoscience than the globe defenders know themselves so rather than turning flat earth into some intellectual competition where your friends and family try to regurgitate and vomit everything they remember from their third grade science class i recommend reading the room first and checking if anyone is actually open-minded enough to listen without preconceptions and judgment it takes more than a single conversation to awaken someone to such a huge deception we want to inspire people to do their own investigation encourage them to do their own experiments and motivate them to do their own deep research into this fascinating paradigm-shifting life-changing subject getting dragged down in debates is counterproductive to the mission of educating and enlightening if people aren't ready to listen and respectfully discuss then they aren't ready to genuinely debate either.